Anxiety is defined as a state of uneasiness and apprehension, as about future uncertainties. I'm not diagnosed, nor would I claim to even have anxiety. But that doesn't mean I don't get anxious about certain things. And what I really wanted to focus on in this video was something called matchmaking anxiety. When you get too scared to queue up for a game for whatever reason. For me, that game is Counter-Strike. I love CS, and I, I want to play it more. I really do, but I hate solo queuing. And my, none of my friends want to play CS, so it sucks for me, I guess. But the idea of getting pitted with toxic or cheating teammates is so ingrained in my head that I don't want to queue, even though it's really unlikely that that happens. You know, I'll spend a half hour warming up for some Counter-Strike session that I'll cancel because I didn't want to hit play. I want to overcome this anxiety, this matchmaking anxiety, so I decided to force myself to play five games of solo queue. Uh, it, it went pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> to start off, I couldn't have seen this coming um, because I wasn't paying attention in the past like six months, but Valve banned third-party softwares from Counter-Strike, and that includes OBS. So I, I just couldn't record my game unless I wanted to record my entire screen, which would lag my game. And I even have some footage that uh, that shows me being frustrated with the lag because I wanted to play CS, but I just wasn't ready to sacrifice my frames for this. So I momentarily decided to quit. Gave up. I wasn't going to do the challenge, even though I wanted to. Uh, but then I remembered, hey... Riot Games released Valorant earlier this year, and it's one that I honestly don't really like talking about because I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it. That I I really like the game. I think the game itself is really good. You know, I like the gunplay, I like the art style, and I love the developers. But there are just certain things about the game that I just don't enjoy, and it just makes the game not fun for me. And I'll get to some of those later. Nonetheless, I wanted to continue with the challenge, so. I hopped on Valorant after a good solid 10 minutes of warm up. I hopped into my first ranked game. Heading into the first game, one of the reasons of my matchmaking anxiety was very apparent. Uh, I tried to be friendly and ask my teammates how they were, but in response, I got some in game voice lines and one teammate with a reply. One of the places my matchmaking anxiety comes from and stems from is having to communicate and not having communicative teammates or just people that talk and bring down the vibe you know i like to have high energy games and i like to talk with my teammates and just have a good time whether or not we're talking about the game or we're having personal conversations it doesn't matter i just want to talk with people i want to engage with them so it sucks to go into a game where i'm just sitting by myself playing it and then not talking to anyone so, the game started out fine. Uh, we lost the round, but ultimately I got a kill and some people were talking, so it could have been worse. Uh, unfortunately, this round did kind of foreshadow the rest of the game. Uh, I was playing C, and the enemy team just kept going to other bomb sites. That's just part of the game, especially when you're playing on Haven, so I can't really complain about it. But it does lead into something I can complain about, and that's the maps. Like I said earlier, I have a love-hate relationship with Valorant. And one of the things I hate is the maps. Except for Ascent, I dislike all the maps in Valorant. There really isn't one specific thing I hate about the maps, but it's just a feel, you know? Like, I just don't like playing on them. And it's hard for me to pinpoint why. Through the first portion of the game, I played really poorly. I was too focused on using my character's abilities instead of just focusing on what I'm comfortable with, which is shooting. Uh, it got me killed a lot. Uh, you can see in this clip here that I got a good lurk kill but that I immediately went to pull out utility, which thankfully didn't get me killed, but it had gotten me killed a lot earlier in the half. The rest of the game was honestly pretty boring. I was playing poorly, and we ultimately lost, so we'll just skip ahead to the next game. The second game was interesting, um, because I was put in a full plat team. I felt like I had to show up, and luckily for me, I was playing on Ascent, the only map I enjoy. So I had a really good feeling heading into it. I was mostly correct about it, 
It was fun, my teammates were communicative and supportive, and we were just having a good time. I wasn't playing as well as I could have, but that was mainly due to me taking more of a supportive role and just kind of letting my plat teammates do what they want to do. The game should have been amazing, but it didn't feel right. Aside from this one good round, I really wasn't having much luck in the way of round winning performances, even though the kills were pretty much mostly even. You know, n no one on my team was really hyper caring, we were all pulling our own weight. But the fact that I wasn't really able to carry in some sense, even more than one round, really got to me mentally, and it dragged down the entire experience for me. Thinking back on it, I put way too much pressure on myself to perform throughout the entire challenge, and it really negatively impacted the experience for me. After these two games, I was drained. Partly due to solo queuing, partly due to Valorant. And I needed a break, so I took a break and while I was relaxing, I did some research on how I could play CSGO and record footage. And I, I learned that you can't actually disable the third party block but it reduces your trust factor. Now at the time I wasn't really concerned about the trust factor because hey, I have been playing CS for years. And aside from a couple of like lever punishments because I had to go eat dinner or something and I was playing with my friends, I was a standout guy. I've never been chat banned, I've never been back banned. Everything's solid. So I wasn't afraid of the low trust factor and I decided to just go with it. So after two games of what was supposed to be a CSGO challenge, I finally played CSGO. Starting the game was this weird mix of emotions, because on the one hand, my teammates were not extremely communicative, but on the other hand, I was playing on Nuke, one of my favorite maps, and I was playing Ramp, my favorite position. So overall, I was feeling pretty good at the start of the game. The first round was a real confidence booster. After those two really bad performances on Valorant, it felt so good having just one good round in CS. I couldn't aim to save my life, but I played it extremely well. And even looking back on the footage, I think I played it really well. Like, it wasn't perfect, but I'm proud of it. The second round, however, was really bad. Half of my team didn't buy real weapons, even though we won, and someone on the other team didn't get any money for that round. There was excessive aggression from my teammates, and I missed some shots. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I'm just gonna spoil the rest of the game. It was pretty much that. We were aggressive, we didn't communicate, we didn't buy properly, and one guy was literally being toxic in team chat and only buying a Zeus the entire game. I, I did what I could, but it was mostly just me saving guns and playing for exit kills. As unfun as that game was, it taught me a lesson. Don't play Counter-Strike with low trust factor. <laughs> Which unfortunately meant that I was going back to Valorant for the last two games. The next day, I booted up Valorant and queued up for my fourth and, spoiler alert, last game of the challenge. Just from how the games have gone so far, I assume you can guess where this is going. The game was on Icebox, which is one of my least favorite maps. My teammates were kind of communicative, but ultimately I played, up, I played really poorly and we ended up winning? The game was crazy. We ended up playing 30 rounds, which we managed to push it to from a 7-12 deficit. If I hadn't played poorly, and if I actually enjoyed playing Valorant, the game would have been incredibly hype, but it wasn't. This game showed me kind of the big flaw of this challenge, and really why I probably shouldn't have done it in the first place. I don't like playing Valorant. I, the abilities and the maps just, I don't enjoy. Even, even though I was winning, I wasn't having fun and it was just draining so I decided to stop at four games now ultimately I think it was the wrong choice and I should have finished it out I mean it was one more game but I didn't looking back on this experience and this challenge two weeks later yeah I think it was helpful you know I realized that matchmaking isn't as scary as I thought it was it was something else this challenge helped me realize why I play games. You know, I don't do it for the competition, even though I enjoy some competition here and there. I do it to hang out with my friends and to, you know, spend time with my friends, especially now during this global pandemic. It's impossible to go see them. 
I've played 3,000 combined hours between Rocket League and League of Legends, and they're not necessarily two games I'd say are my favorite. You know, they're not even in my top five. I just love hanging out with my friends, and playing Rocket League and League of Legends with my friends is some of, if not the most fun I've ever had playing video games, even though the games themselves aren't like necessarily my favorite games of all time. Ultimately, this experience helped me realize where my matchmaking anxiety comes from. You know, it, it doesn't come from where I thought it did, where I thought it was from not wanting to play with toxic people or cheating people. But at the end of the day, it's about the uncertainty of whether or not my game is going to be fun, whether or not I'm going to walk out of it going, that was a good experience. I enjoyed that. You know, I've met some horrible people online. But I've also met some of my best friends through a game like Counter-Strike. So, truth be told, I don't know what I'm getting every time I press play, and that's what scares me. This challenge helps me understand myself. And for that, I'm happy. You know, even if the games were painful and awkward, and I didn't enjoy a second of it, they helped me learn. They helped me learn, and that is all I could ask for. So I'd say this experiment was a success.